Now, I know that uh, you know a whole lot about Fred Durst, Martin. You, you look like a Limp Biscuit fan. Not even a, I don't even know one of their songs. <laughs> He's wearing one of the them brimless hats like you're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> You have to be careful. I don't want you to be accused of stalking. Hey, you can't just come to my private residence looking for me. Now, before we start, have to let you know that this video has been approved and sponsored by NordVPN. Never know who's watching you. You never know who's following you. You never know who's stalking you, especially on the Internet. And that is why it is in your best interest to invest in a service that provides a virtual private network or a VPN. Now, a lot of people agree that one of the best VPNs out there is NordVPN. And why is that? Well, for one, they have military grade encryption. You can also go to their website and see where all their servers are located and the many different types of servers that they are using, which will give you security and protection all around the world, even in places where VPNs are restricted. These people are smart. They know how to get past all that. You also have support on six different devices, including Mac OS, iPhone, iPad, Windows, Android, Android TV, Chrome, Firefox, and Linux. Now, you know me. You know I'm crazy. I'm looking up all kind of wild stuff on the Internet. I'm not trying to hide it. So I signed up for NordVPN, and you should too, and we've made it very easy for you to do. All you need to do is go to the link, nordvpn.com forward slash double toasted to get 75% off a three-year plan and use the code double toasted. That's all one word, double toasted, for an extra month for free. So please sign up for NordVPN. I've made it easy for you. Protect yourself. And once again, I want to thank NordVPN for approving and sponsoring this video. Even if you hate Lip Biscuit, Martin, you know, it's the guy that did it for the nookie. I did it all for the nookie. Come on, the nookie. Come on, so you can take that cookie. Oh, he did it all for the nookie, Martin. The nookie. And you can take that cookie and stick it up your ass, Martin, if you that don't like it. That is what it is. Take the cookie and stick it up stick your it ass. Stick it up your ass, Martin, okay. if you don't like it. I mean, I, that's what I thought I heard, but I was like, uh, hopefully not. No, nah, but <laughs> No, nah, man. He means it. Okay. But now, Martin, today, he's moved on from that. He's taking that cookie and stuck it up John Travolta's ass. <laughs> 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 Look, he's even pointing at me. He's like, it's up there. <laughs> That is your Fred Durst today, Martin. You know, he, he wants to be a film auteur. An auteur. An auteur, Martin. And, you know, he kind of wants to be the next Quentin Tarantino. You know, uh, John Travolta hasn't had the best string of luck these days. Sure. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But, you know, he's, he, he, uh, Fred Durst says, you know what I'm, I'm, I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you another uh, travolta science. <laughs> John Travolta renaissance. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have talked about the movie that we're about to review today, and they have talked. Mad shit. Mad shit. A lot of crazy shit about it. Even before the movie got out the gate, people said, you lose. (laughs) 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 Not us, though. They haven't even shut off the gun yet. Don't worry about it. Don't sit down. No, you're not supposed to be here. (laughs) Go home. You're a loser. You fail. I can tell. I'm just trying to help you. That's not us, though. I I tell you, the moment I show him that trailer, and we both said, I'd be like, ooh, we can't wait to get mm-hmm. some of this fanatic right here. And that is the movie we're talking about. John Travolta as the fanatic. As you can tell from the, from the title there, he plays a character who all he wanted was an autograph from his favorite action and horror movie star, Hunter. Just as he's about to get that, that autograph, he was next in line. Something happens, he has to leave, doesn't get that autograph, and it changes the life of these two men forever. Ooh, Martin, if that ain't drama for your ass, I don't know what it is. puts them on a collision course, just these, the simple action. One simple action. Something that could have been avoided. Changes the life of these men forever. Let's go ahead and take a look at this trailer for the fanatic. Your mind. If you look over on Rotten Tomatoes, oh, Martin, 18%. it's got a poor 18% right there. Yeah. Now, 
you look at that, you look at something that is a failure. I look at this to actually have a, uh, I look at this as a moment to look at a good thing here. I see this as a moment of positivity. Now, if you look on the bright side, uh, it actually did a lot better than his last four movies. I mean, you know, at least it didn't, at least we don't have a fifth zero percent in a row. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we got two, oh, look, wow. like, like he's had a string of zero percent movies back to back. Gotti, Gotti got a big old splat at zero percent. Mr. Gotti, are you the head of the Gambino crime family? I'm the head of my family. Mrs. Gotti, do you know what your husband does for a living? He provides. John's getting too much press. That can't go unchecked. You know, <laughs> John Travolta wish he was in that car right now. <laughs> you know, like I said, because of this, look, I saw Gotti. Gotti was terrible. I didn't. As I mentioned, I didn't even know these other movies that were in existence. Right, right. right. Looking at all those uh, those zero percenters on Rotten Tomatoes, and looking at how people gonna look at John Travolta in this, and that's what's gonna happen because he's had a string of hard flops. Yeah, you know, big ass belly flops that he's done right here. You know, they're gonna look at him. And they're gonna, and he's gonna catch the brunt of it. Right. And the reason why, because he is doing something different. I mean, it doesn't help that he's in a performance where, you know, he, uh, it's easy to make fun of him because he's being an autistic stalker Bar? in the film. Is Hunter Dunbar here tonight? That's enough. I need to get an autograph. Don't let him do this to me. You know, it. yeah, it is easy to make fun of him because the role that he's playing, it, you know, it's supposed to be creepy. It's supposed to be, you know, uh, it's supposed to be something that disturbs you. And it's something that's very different for him. Mm, yeah. Yeah, matter of fact, I, one thing I read, it, it, it was saying how this is him d definitively crossing over from being a leading man to a character actor. And you know what? That's Before we say anything about this movie, while everybody's trying to go, like I said, kick this man while he's down, I will defend him with this. This is one of the most daring roles to date that he has taken. All these movies, they're just John Travolta. With a different accent. And a different costume. And, a, and in a different costume. But it's pretty much still John Travolta. Blinsky, he's a snake. You get involved with the likes of him, and I guarantee you'll get hurt. Championship means more than your father. That's a movie, Trade and Paint, where he had races his own kid in, in NASCAR or some shit. <laughs> why do I nobody saw that? Well, <laughs> I, I got to be honest. Not, not John Travolta, but the minute I see Michael Madsen in something, I know, like, oh, well. Yeah. Like, this, this is skippable. Yeah, yes, yes. Hey, you can, you know, good, good for John Travolta. It could always be worse. You could be Michael Madsen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with with this movie, not only has he gone from trying to be a leading man in something to a character actor, but I would say for the longest time, uh, you know, I would say ever. Not even for the longest time. Maybe you know, maybe since Pulp Fiction. But I would say, you know, this is the first time. I just in a long time, if ever, that I've seen him like totally transform into another person. He was completely immersed in this character. And, yeah. And I saw all, all the bad reviews that talk about they talk about the the bad hairstyle and him, you know, and this 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 wild mm -hmm. over the top performance. I'm watching it and I'm going, uh, I don't know what y'all talking about. He he's nailing this. Okay, so here's where I all right, I said some good things, right? I was very supportive. I was being positive. Man, listen, I know you about to dog this movie, but I really dug it. I I, 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 I liked it a lot. I was matter of fact, I was I, I stopped it at one point to go back and read the bad reviews. Like, man, what is it what is everybody's deal with this? It was about minute mm -hmm. forty two, ha the halfway point. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like right after I said those words, like I don't get what they're talking about. Everything took a major downshift. And oh, yeah. all was revealed, oh, yeah. and it just started plummeting. I was like, I was looking at you, and I was like, "Brother, don't do this. No, don't make us do this. No, no. I thought, I, was, I, I thought, I was about to put your ass in therapy. I was like, it, <laughs> it, when it turned that corner, or or hit that slope, it started speeding down. Because Martin, I look at you, because you say I know you're gonna dog this movie. I'm like you, goddamn right, I'm about yeah, to dog this movie, yeah, and I'm yeah. and I'm dogging it a lot earlier than you did. Because I'm gonna tell you something. This this whole thing where everybody's talking about his his uh the way he looks and his autism being so extreme, 
I'm like, you goddamn right. This, you know, the problem with the character is that I, I really appreciate what they did with him playing an autistic character, or what they, or what they were trying to do with it. But f- man, it's the, the 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 problem with the character is that he's just not autistic. Like this movie goes out of its way to make him a complete f- idiot. They like you know you they just went too far to even make him look physically stupid. You know, they gave him a mullet and a chili bowl at the same time. <laughs> you know, they made him dress like a, you know, like a, like an eight-year-old Hawaiian tourist or something. You but know, I was th- like. That, I, I, that kind of haircut is somebody gets when they're young because they think it's, it's cool at the time. And then they get older and they never change it. But it don't even make, I can't even make sense of this. It's like, I, I would figure that he at least has sense enough to like it, it connect the sideburns to the hair. You know, I don't. <laughs> And this mullet that he's got back there, I'm like, what the f- is going on with this man? You know, that that to me, and I uh, with with what they're doing with autism, and again, it's not me trying to be oversensitive or anything, but I think they're making a mockery of it. They're making a mockery of the shit. That it's so, I, it was so bad that there were times I felt like I shouldn't be laughing. Now I did. <laughs> you know, I, you goddamn right I did because they. You know, because mostly I was laughing because they made this man a clown. <laughs> you, 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 when you look at when, as the movie goes on, even for what he does for a living, is it's stupid. They, 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 he, 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 I'm not, he, when he's so they got these people out there on the strip, you the, know, the like in, and, and they're the buskers. They got him in New York. They got him uh, in Las Vegas, and they got him on, on the LA Strip. These people who dress up uh, in costume. To get money from tourists. Uh, now, there's a lot of things out there that people, they give them money because like, oh, shit, I recognize that. I recognize that. Ain't nobody giving money to an old-ass British cop. Yeah, a, a Bobby. With a bad accent that you're about to hear. Hello, welcome to all. Welcome to Hollywood. Welcome to Hollywood. What crimes are mine of? London Bridge is right over there. It's <laughs> like, get the <laughs> f- <off. laughs> no, he, he, no, it's like even even the job they gave him, it was something to make him look stupid. They, they, you, and, I, you know, is it like he is playing a character that no one gives a shit about. How does a man that can barely dress himself, barely get by in life, how does he make a living doing a bad impression of an old British Bobby cop and still somehow still somehow is, has an apartment with all these old movie mm. memorabilia. Yeah, I know. You know, he, a, a job ain't nobody giving him money for. He's got no kind of disability or help. He, he's got uh, help from one friend who says, I just give you money every now and then, but it ain't enough to support him. I was like, this shit doesn't make sense at all. Unless he's on SSI. But they don't explain that no. anything. It's full of holes. <laughs> don't get me wrong. It's it's so much about well, we want to have him do this. We want to have him do this, and nobody sat there to go, "Hey guys, um, if we do this, then this isn't gonna work." There's yeah. nobody there to say that. It just kept going. Oh, and it, yeah, no, it it man, y'all strap in because we're going downhill quick at this point. That's what I'm saying. We, <laughs> I mean, we're going full speed, and we ain't got no brakes. No. We about to crash this shit. No, I was, I was, I was kind of heartbroken. I was like, okay, so we're gonna do that now. Yeah, you goddamn right. This man's gonna hurt somebody. Because in the movie, that's what it is. He's not just he's a fanatic. The reason why he turns into a stalker is because he just doesn't understand everyday. He doesn't understand rules. He doesn't. He doesn't understand boundaries. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he's a child. He's a, a big ass child named Moose. <laughs> <laughs> And you're like, you got damn right he's going to hurt somebody. Especially when he doesn't know his own strength. If you combined a comic book guy from The Simpsons with Rob De Niro from The Fan, and then you threw Lenny from A Mice and Man in there. (laughs) Because he's going to f***ing hurt somebody. Uh uh He is a violent, big-ass, autistic guy named Moose, and people still want to provoke him. I know. He was he had a whole house full of horror and, and, mm. and genre shit, but I didn't see nothing to indicate this lame ass fucking like this is the <laughs> you know what this is what your mama dressed you in when that's the last 
fucking thing left on the rack at the Halloween store. And she's like, you better take this shit or leave it. <laughs> you know? I mean, considering how broke he was, maybe that was the Maybe that was the case. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Lord, the bitch is over there. <laughs> but don't get me wrong. The shit had me laughing. <laughs> I was laughing hard at the shit. I was like, I was having a great time. Martin, don't get me wrong. <laughs> I'm trying to look. I'm talking logical shit, but that was so entertaining to me. When that came on, I was at my cousin's house watching this, and it was in the middle of the night. When he came up doing this stupid shit right here, and I saw him out there, hello, hello. I'm like, ah, <laughs> this shit gets dumber and dumber. <laughs> I love it. This is, I, this is, this is my shit, Martin. The reason why I laugh so hard at this is because they think. That they are doing something. They think they're making a statement of being pro- a profound. And when you get to something like this, it's like, man, they're in quicksand. It's like the more that they try to be serious and dramatic and profound, the more they sink, but the funnier it gets. <laughs> you get to moments where this absolutely makes no sense whatsoever. No matter how much I try to bend this shit, no matter how I try to put it together, this man, as I told you, is, and they've seen him, he is a violent, strong-ass, autistic man with the mind of a six-year-old named Moose. That's his real name, by the way. Mm. <laughs> you have a flashback with him. Mom is like, oh, that's my little Moosey over there. And I was like, That cheap-ass flashback. That cheap-ass flashback. <laughs> I was like, like damn. Like the like, well, this explains why he is like he is. No, it doesn't. No. That's the the, the cheapest pull this out of the book of cliches you could ever throw oh, in. Oh, because there. mom was a hoe and she yeah. named his ass Moose? No, yeah. get the fuck out of here. <laughs> With that. Not only do people keep keep provoking him, but they try to get him to do things that anybody, anybody would have just with a would, would remote common sense would would know that he can't do this mm-hmm. they got these by the way yeah. these terrible thugs in this movie these street thugs in there bullies bullies <laughs> in a movie with adults we got bullies yeah school y'all bullies man they're acting like kids mm-hmm. hey moosey moosey how you doing moose where you going moose <laughs> can, you, can you guys just leave me alone oh leave me alone yeah. leave me alone <laughs> come on yeah in you eight yeah in the in, in the in, in the boys bathroom by the way. Yeah. <laughs> like like bullies in high school do where you going moosey but but when they're not making fun, when they're not making fun of him, one of them is trying to, uh, is trying to initiate him into a life of crime. Yeah, of picking people's pockets. Of picking people's pockets. Hey, my man, we on for the night show or what? We're gonna be making mucho Donald Trump. Leave me alone, Todd. Thank now, he wants him to pick pockets, as Martin said. This is something that takes stealth, cleverness, and skill, and skill and finesse. Mm-hmm. So, who do you choose? <laughs> you choose. The loud ass, mentally challenged, clumsy guy uh-huh. who bumps into everything, everything when he's walking down the street. Can't hold his cell phone without <laughs> dropping it. This is the shit where, when you're writing it, when you're writing it, before this ever gets to production, you stop and you say, Man, this is stupid. Mm-hmm. What am I doing? This makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. None! <laughs> At all. And I tried. I tried. You know, come on, Fred. <laughs> I, I trusted you, man. <laughs> like, come on, you did it for the nookie, man. Come on. <laughs> Just like with this guy, like he's not enough that he's a, a rival and a criminal, but he has to be a straight up bully. And then you got the other lead character, Devin Sawa. You know, you're like, oh, he's an actor who's put upon by this fan, but that guy's a straight up asshole. Almost like like he's got roid rage all the time. Yeah. There were so many people that picked on this guy that even at his most violent, I'm talking about Moose. Yeah. Even when Moose was at his most violent, I want I, I seriously I wanted to feel sorry for him. But they gave <laughs> if there wasn't enough that this movie don't make any sense, they got some of the worst lines in the film. And some of those come from when Moose is losing his shit. Uh-huh. They're terrible lines, and you want to feel sorry for this man, but you just can't help but laugh. That man's just like, you know what, just finish it. I can't take this shit. (laughs) Do it. Just stop spitting. Do it. (laughs) And that's the thing, man. I was digging John Travolta's performance, except the times, like, maybe that was the first time when he started to get really emotional and lose his shit. And that's when I was like, 
all right, this is kind of cartoonish. Now. Man, they- I, I was like suddenly like like everything I was blowing off that that, that the the haters had said. I was like. Oh, the world is opening up to me, and I see it all clearly now. <laughs> what was I thinking before? <laughs> and it just keeps getting worse. I'm like, damn, Fred, that's why you didn't get no nookie. <laughs> you <know? laughs> hey, you take that all cookie. Right, yeah, you, you took that cookie and stuck it right up your own ass. Hey, man, talk about what you said before. It seemed like they kind of had something they wanted to say, but by the second half, they didn't know what they were saying. They didn't know what they were doing, man. I'm gonna tell you something. You brought up the uh, what was his name? Devin Sawa. Devin Sawa. Yeah. Devin Sawa, man. You you would you would think like, okay, now this is where there's a movie that's gonna do something kind of smart. And I, I, I like I said, man, I knew this shit wasn't going nowhere, but I can see somebody who thought it was, and yeah, because you think like, all right, maybe we're gonna get in this area right now where Moose, uh, we've kind of felt sorry for him. Moose is somebody that we've had sympathy for, but it drives us to a point when he starts stalking this guy that, yeah, man, as much as I want to care for this guy, I can't. This guy's a danger. But no, you want Moose to just, in this whole world, you want him to just burn this shit because, <laughs> because Hunter Dunbar, played by uh-huh. Devin Sauer, as you say, he's a complete asshole and almost for no reason. For no reason. You can't just come to my private residence looking for me. Listen, pal, I don't know how you found me. But I don't ever want to see you in this neighborhood again. Now, you think that that's after this guy's been just stalking him and stalking him and bothering him. And, and, and now, Hunter Dunbar, this, he just got to tell him straightforward. Listen, I tried to be nice. Mm-hmm. Except he never tried to be nice. He, he never tried to be nice. <laughs> not even once. Not once. That's the beginning of that relationship. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, pal. I'm not going to tell you again. Uh, you know, it's just kind of like. And, and the whole, if I see you in this neighborhood. Like, you don't own this neighborhood, uh-huh. man. And Moose said, okay. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> he don't get it. If I right. see this neighborhood again, oh, he wants to see me. <laughs> and the yeah, thing Moose about it, is, yeah, no, f- this guy, this guy, Hunter Dunbar, f- a man, yeah. all the guy had to do instead of, because di- all you had to do was be like, hey, listen, you know, you can't do this, man. Maybe I'm a nice guy. Maybe you're a nice guy. I don't know. But all you have to do is say, hey, listen, man, you can't come around here again. But you saw you want as an autograph? What do you want it, man? Yeah. Good. You want to take a picture, too? Good. Now, don't come back around here like this because you get in trouble, man. And if it ain't me, it's going to be somebody else. Mm-hmm. But no, he's like, hey, look, I'm not giving you a fucking autograph, all right? Get the fuck out of here. And, it's, and meanwhile, the audience is kind of like, man, just give him a fucking autograph. And yeah, you see him there where he's using threatening language, sort of. He goes on to give him a direct and, and point by point threat of what he physically is going to do to him. Yeah. And it's like, man, it, I'm sorry, writers, huddle up. Huddle yeah, up. yeah, exactly. Everybody hates this this character. People are starting to hate all these characters. Nobody would say that. No. Cut that shit out. I mean, man, look, this is the, this is the, even if the guy is creepy, it's a mentally challenged guy. Yes. This, you want to talk about bullies? Even more than those street thugs. This man, this who's guy. supposed to be the guy that we are supposed to kind of relate to in a way, or maybe that's not the point. I don't yeah, know. Maybe that's not the point, but I don't know. But and, cause I, and I and I think it wasn't because once we do a spoiler talk for this, or we're gonna, you know, I want to do a whole spoiler talk, but we will tell you what the end of the movie is like uh, for those who want to stick around. But uh, so maybe they did try to make this guy unlikable for a reason. But man, it's a mentally challenged guy. Yeah. And he talks to this guy, he says, and before they even look, it never had to get to this point where he says, hey, look, if I see you around here again, I'm going to take my f***ing rifle, stick it up your ass, you're going to be shitting blood and bullets for weeks. You get me? Now get the f*** out of here. No, that's, that's literally what he said. Yeah. Oh, okay, so, yeah. It's like, man, look, I get it, this guy's creepy, but you ain't got to do this shit, now no. you're an asshole. Uh-huh. And I, and to be honest with you, I hope he f***s you up. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Yeah, you want you want to play because Moose is mentally challenged. Yeah, what's your excuse? What's your excuse? You're just an asshole. Because mm-hmm. there's times I can't tell if Hunter is a parody. Because right, I know what you mean. Because what the thing, what, what they do with Hunter is that they show the movies <laughs> that he's in. You know, they they, uh, they show Moose watching some of his films, and I, you know, you look at those films and they're terrible. Yeah, uh, there's even a point where. Where Hunter plays an action hero who wears not only his name on his jacket, but he's supposed to be a tough action hero, and his name is Bedazzled. Yeah. On his, you know, <laughs> like he did, like he made this shit at Holly, Hobby Lobby. Uh huh. Rico, <laughs> you know, like it looked like. I mean, if you didn't know any better, and I'm not, I don't mean this in a bad way, derogatory way. He looks like he'd be going to an S and M gay club. Yeah. He does. 
And you I know, mean, maybe, maybe that was what he was doing undercover. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we yeah we didn't see the whole movie. But the point is, is, is that in any other movie, you could you could be like, well, they're satirizing action movies and they made it purposely bad. But not here because it, it makes it hard to tell. The tone blends with this film. It's uh-huh. like all oh, this shit is bad. Uh huh. So I can't tell if this is a parody or not. Yeah. Uh, rest of these characters are not that good. Uh, you have uh, Anna Goja plays his friend Leah. Uh, now she's been in some other things like Degrassi High and stuff like that. So again, I'm gonna do that thing where I'm not gonna blame her for being a terrible actress based on her talent, but she's horrible in this. And they give her some amazing lines. When I say amazing, amazingly bad. There was one line I laughed out loud at, and I believe me, I wasn't doing this to be, I wasn't doing this to uh, uh, to be sarcastic. But there's a line in here where she says, "Moose didn't just cross the line; he f- nuked it." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? In the movie, there is a there is a uh there's a dead woman laying in somebody's yard, uh-huh. broad daylight, there for a couple of days, next to a window, in Hunter Dunbar's yard, and he does not see it. Where there's a gardener who also works out there. Yeah. <laughs> he don't see it and we don't hear nothing about it. And we don't hear nothing about it. For I would say now this movie's so crazy. I don't know how yeah, time is passing. Know. It's hard to know time. But it felt like a couple of day, mm-hmm. <laughs> days, mm-hmm. and it's not. And, and and it's there where people can see. It's right by the gate. Nobody saw this. In that climax, that climax where I mean, this is where I you know I just have an appreciation for the movie for not giving a f- whether it's intentional or not. No, it's so gone. Yeah. <laughs> I gave up. They're like, I'm out, man. I'm going home. I I, I clearly see I'm not needed here. No wanted. So badly insane where they got him tied up. Uh, It turns uh, it turns clumsily, clumsily into a into a into a horror movie. This is where it actually now he turns into Kathy Bates from Misery. Moose does. Mm -hmm. The movie becomes uh, 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 a violent to a point, like violent in a horror movie type of way where. It didn't really need to be. It. My mouth was on the floor because <laughs> we're going along at this one certain pace, and then something happens, and I was just like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah." I, I, I can't even believe this is where you, this was your choice. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> Which, what movie are we in now? It would be. It's so. It's. It's just so mean spirited. Yes. In the end, like it's like it would be repulsive if it weren't so f- nuts, man. Right. <laughs> yeah, because I remember reading how it was mean spirited. And the whole time I was like, hey, "Really, hey. somebody else said that?" Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, I read that in some other reviews, uh, at least a couple. Uh, before, it was actually in the original article that even told me this movie existed, and they talked about it being mean spirited and hating its audience and hating its characters. Well, I'm glad that somebody said it because I thought I was going to be like, "This don't sound like I'm just kind of being oversensitive." No, I no, no. Because like, I I remember reading that, and as I was watching the movie, I thought they were being oversensitive, and it gets to that part, and I was like, "Oh yeah, all right." I, you know what? I got to reserve judgment about judgment until I see for myself. Well, they're right. They, they are right. I mean, then I can I can come out and say, you know, wholeheartedly with confidence. Yeah, this movie just gets it gets kind of nihilistic at the end for mm-hmm. no for no reason for, for no reason. Or again, maybe there is, but if there is, if the the ending and what they were trying to do with that violence, they're trying to make a statement with it. It falls flat on his ass because they're trying to do something with irony uh, at this at the end yeah. and it has no impact because it's predictable and it's just not as clever as they think they're being yet i really did have a good time with this <laughs> I, it's it like i said man maybe i'm mean spirited but there's nothing funny to me than seeing somebody just up there Thinking they just being a genius with their <laughs> shit, being smart, and the whole thing just gets dumber. And they, the smarter they think they are, the dumber this shit gets. And that's where the the rewards are reaped by us because we get the one of the greatest comedies out there. I'm telling you, man, this is this lacks logic, detail, and and and, and the dialogue, and some of the 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 story is so bad. That this is one of those films, like yes, you. With the people ask the question, well, is it good, bad? Yes, it is. It's brilliantly yeah. bad. And there's one moment in here. If you think Fred Durst is is, is not taking this seriously, he can't even. I mean, it, he can't even uh, uh, make fun of himself. <laughs> there's a moment in here where Martin is talking about it. You know, it, look, I, I I'll give it to you, man. I told you, I that's one of my guilty pleasures is listening to Limp Biscuit.
like the song. I, you know, I, I'm not telling nobody to listen to it. I ain't saying it's, gro- it's, it's good. That's why I say great. Don't even go that far. I ain't saying it's good. Yeah, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying it's a guilty pleasure, man. So I'm not hating on the man. But goddamn, you don't put your own song in a movie no, and be like, oh, my God, isn't this great? This, there's a part in here where he's uh, Hunter Dunbar's driving, and they put on Limp Biscuit. And now the cool thing to do would have been like, oh, and I'm not saying his music's bad, but to make fun of it, you know, be like, oh, what the hell is this? These guys are terrible. Actually, the cool thing would be to not even mention it. To not even it, mention it, it. It plays on the radio, and maybe you turn to something else, or it plays quickly, or it plays softly while two characters are talking. But this is to call it out and then say to the kid, "What you don't like? This, this is great music." Oh, the kid didn't even say. Shut up. The kid didn't even ask him for it. The kid said nothing. The dad put the music on. He put some Limp Biscuit song on. He just and he's like, "Oh yeah, kid, this is Limp Biscuit. These guys are great." Oh, this is a, oh wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Oh, this is the good part right here. And I'm just like, did Fred Durst have his dick in his hand when he's directing this part? Mm, mm. I mean, we were actually ride while God going uh-huh. is getting off. Mm. Oh yeah, kid, this is good right here. This is good. it's like I, well, maybe, that's why I said I would have like for the kid, we even like for the kid to be like, Jesus, kid, uh, or Jesus, dad, you guys listen to this. Well, maybe he got influenced by uh, Once Upon a Time in the in the Hollywood. When he kept driving around listening to songs. But the, but it wasn't like those artists were listening to their own songs. And I will give the look. If I can say one good thing about the movie. Um, it does make you feel a little bit disturbed in some points because these weird drawings just come up out of nowhere. Oh, right. Yeah, these weird drawings. And it, and it really does. I felt like, man, you know what? If this movie was actually better, those would have added so much I to know. the tone. I know. There's so many different ideas going on in this movie. Yeah. And nobody to corral them, to give them unity. Now, you're trying to be all these movies that have done it better. Uh, First of all, you tried to be a movie that wasn't even all that great, and you couldn't even achieve that. Oh, you know, I was just there. You would have done the same thing. How do you think you got out of that slump, Bob? I just stopped caring, man. You stopped caring? To share the spotlight. What the f*** is wrong with you, man? (laughs) But that movie did a lot better than what they did here. But I think we already mentioned a lot. Misery. Uh, we mentioned uh, 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 the uh, fan. 24-hour photo. But I mean, one-hour photo. One-hour photo. But one-hour yeah. photo is the one that this is really trying to be like and the one that did it the best. I mean, he might even have a lot of friends. I don't think he does. You know, that's an amazing performance by Robin Williams. Mm-hmm. And if you take a little bit of all these these things that this movie has dipped its toe in, like I said, misery, one hour photo, the fan, um, you know, uh, 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 rain man, I don't know. you know, it's like all these things have done it so much better. Yeah, I mean, not only is it not as co- competent as any of those movies, and it's a mistake to try to be all things, all of these different things at once, mm-hmm. but then it just starts to turn cheesy. Like it, it mm-hmm. gets to be one of those cheesy, almost campy thrillers. Yep, and. So, it, why are you going to go this route now? I'd still stick by John Travolta. John Travolta, I think, did uh, an amazing performance in here. I know it's crazy to say with this movie. I think he did an amazing performance, but they gave him nothing to yeah. deliver it. Right, right. As, and especially as it goes on, the more he has to start losing it, it then his performance is not as great as it was. But yep. he started out as a good character piece. In as much as there's scenes when he's around people, like when he's at the Hollywood party, I, I, I squirmed because I was like, Damn it, this reminds me of times I brought friends to things like this and they didn't know how to act. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. It's no. Just like, shit. Well, you just I, feel sorry for the guy, yeah, too, because him, yeah. he's, a, he's out of his element. Somebody mm-hmm. needs to take care of him. And he's in an element where, you know, he he doesn't get it. And I felt, I did feel sorry for him there. I, I, I feel bad for John Travolta. That is an amazing thing that he was doing and it got ruined by just a really bad movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, you know, uh, he's really the only great thing besides. I mean, besides, you know, watching this for a, a, a really good laugh. It's, it's, he's a, he's, Just for that moment where you go, what? Well, yeah, and there's several of those. So, yeah, I give it yeah, I give it some more bullshit. I can't even go out and give it a complete fuck you because it's not a movie that, like, it's not so bad that, I, I, I you know, things were making me mad. That's not one thing in here that made me mad. Not one. I was frustrated, but I really was not mad. I was frustrated and a little mad, but John Travolta is enough to keep it from being a fuck you. Yeah, some more bullshit. Some more bullshit, yeah. Thanks for watching, everybody. You made it to the end of the video. That means you have fun. Look, you ain't going anywhere. I know it. You know it. So hit that subscribe button. Also, get notifications. And if you really love what we do, and you do, go over to DoubleToasted.com. Over there, you'll find 
the long version of this video along with many others over there, uncensored, unedited, I might add. Also, you'll find the live stream that we do almost every night of the week. Support us at our store, dtmerch.com. Remember, always stay toasty.